Your Excellency, I'm very sorry, but I can't let you in. For safety reasons, people from Teleme are not tolerated at the palace. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, of course. I'm so dangerous that I could attack the palace all by myself. Your Excellency, Lord Dasade, and to what do I owe this honor? I met Ulan, the Bone Blower's clan chief from the village of Vignamri. He is an open minded man who holds great expectations of exchanges with the colonies. He would like to meet you to discuss a treaty, even an alliance. Ulan, you say? I have never heard mention of this name, but to finally have an ally among the natives could only be beneficial. That is excellent news. Still, I fear that I cannot leave the city. That would be taking too much of a risk. I doubt that Ulan will come to Hikmet. He is looking for an alliance, but he is not desperate. Such a gesture would be considered a sign of weakness by his clan. That is understandable, I suppose. Do they grasp the concept of emissaries? Do you think that solution might work? I think that might be possible. I'm sure he would understand that you could not come to see him in person for the same reason. Excellent. Finally, some clear skies in our negotiations with the natives. My right-hand man will then go to this village to finalize an agreement with King Ulan. I'll be there too, to make sure everything goes according to our plans. There is another matter concerning the same village that I would like to bring to your attention. A wandering merchant, a member of Ulan's clan, is being kept in your outpost. Can you authorize his entry into the city? I see no harm in that. This merchant is certainly not a threat to us. And he might even prove useful, if the negotiations with his clan should take a foul turn. Here, please be so kind as to give him this letter of passage. If he presents it to the guards, they will let him in and he'll be able to establish his stall in town. I thank you. I hope to see you again. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lord.
Hello, Captain. Your Excellency, what can I do for you? Governor Burren has asked me to help you fight against the caravan attacks. Could you tell me precisely what's going on? For weeks we have been harassed by the savages. They're waiting for groups of soldiers or caravans to be out of sight of the outpost and attack with incredible violence. They don't just steal goods or equipment. They kill without mercy. Only one man survived their last attack. He's here in a sorry state. Do you think he could answer a few questions? Yes, but take it easy on him. I'll make sure I do, Captain. Just keep walking, Renaixe. This does not concern you. Have mercy. They will kill me. I am but a merchant who wishes to trade with the big city. I never thought I would see several Islander warriors attacking a mere merchant. And I thought honor and righteousness were of the utmost importance in your culture. <laughs> I must have been mistaken. What are you trying to say, Renaixe? Are you insulting us? You're insulting yourselves by behaving this way. He's an unarmed man. He's trying to survive. What honor is there in attacking him? He is a traitor. He deserves to be punished. But you are right. He is not worth attacking. Let's leave. His punishment will come once we have chased Renaixe away, and he cannot sell his products. Adlo Reda on Almanawi. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. Think nothing of it. Ulan told me that you were not able to enter the town. It is true. The soldiers did not let me enter. They left me outside, and the Donea Exregao took advantage of this opportunity to attack me. Rest assured, I have obtained permission for you to enter from the governor of Hikmet which should allow you to set up your stall in the city. Ad Loreda, Renaixi. Thanks again. Farewell, merchant. Perhaps we will meet again. Hello there. My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the congregation. I was informed that your caravan was looted and that you were the sole survivor of the attack. It's true, Your Excellency. It was awful. All those deaths. The violence. We followed the recommended precautions to the letter, but it was useless. You mentioned recommended precautions. Yes. Since attacks occur often, we were given a number of precautions to avoid them. Do not travel at certain times, do not camp near the road, do not light any fires. All of it was useless. It would have been better to recruit guards to escort us. What were you transporting? Mostly food, but also herbs and other ingredients for scientists. Did the attackers take it? Everything was a blur. I don't know if they intended to steal or destroy it. Unfortunately, my companions died while trying to protect our cargo. 
Are you saying that the looters started by attacking your cargo? Yes, Your Excellency. Maybe more of us would have survived if we'd all fled. Were there several attackers? I counted five. Maybe six. But others were hiding in the woods. I'm sure of it. If they only had their usual stone weapons, we may have hoped to escape them. But their weapons were inflamed. I have never been so scared in my life. How did the attack happen? We traveled all day. We were exhausted. The night was approaching. We knew we were not very far from the outpost, but we couldn't go any further. So we camped away from the road, trying to stay out of sight. Alas, it was in vain. That's when they struck, in the middle of the night. Hmm. Based on what you're saying, the attacks were very targeted. They must have a camp near the outpost to monitor the road. But what is their goal? Why attack all the caravans along this route? They must want to cut off the supply lines to Hikmet. We'll go to the scene of the attack. I might find something there to help track these rebels. caravan was some distance from the road when it was attacked. Here we are. Stay alert. food has been destroyed. They clearly don't need it, which means that their camp should be close by. They must have died protecting their goods. How sad. These wounds appear to be caused by stone blades, the kind of weapons that islanders use. The crates are empty. Their entire contents have been destroyed. These goods were not meant to reach their destination. They acted quickly methodically, and then left. But where are the bodies? Let's look around. Why was this man's body arranged like that? There's something in his pocket. Poison on my blade. Yeah. Then let's go!
He was in the caravan, but whoever attacked him decided to drag him here and feed him to the wild beasts. A message for other merchants, no doubt. One must admit, it's an effective deterrent. Finally, here's the camp of the rebel natives. Let's try talking to them before rushing in. We must have good reason to only attack the caravans that supply Hikmet. Don't worry, I come in peace. I only wish to speak to your leader. 
I am the leader of this camp, Renaixe. And who might you be? My name is the Sade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. The congregation? Are those the Lugayet Blau? The yellow eyes? It's possible, yes. We live in the city south of the island. That's right. We hold no grudge against your people. Talk. I'm listening. I've come to speak to you about your attacks against all those who take the road to Hikmet. The Lurians only got what they deserve. They have captured many of our people. We must release them. That's the price of war. If you fight, you risk men being taken prisoner. I'm not talking about warriors, Renaixe, but villagers kidnapped in our villages. They mainly attack on all Menawe, those carrying the mark of the bond like you. They capture them, and we never see them again. We don't know what they are doing to them, but we are going to release them. I see. But our merchants have no role in this. They are not warriors. So why kill them? They brought food and weapons back to our enemies. We could not let them pass. If your merchants had fled, we would not have pursued them. But they resisted, so they do it. The city of Loyans is no longer to receive food or weapons. Nothing. In that case, I'm sorry to tell you that you failed. The road is not the only way to transport goods. Many things are transported by sea. Listen, if what you told me is true, I fully understand why you're fighting. I'm even ready to help you clear up these disappearances, as long as you spare our merchants. You no longer need to worry about it. That was our last attack. Our troops are ready, and soon we will make the Luyan pay for the harm it has brought upon us. What are you talking about? Soon, the Donea Exregal will march together, and we will free our brothers. Can you guarantee that our merchants will now be able to take this road without risking their lives? I always keep to my word. The time for small attacks is over. Now is the time of war. I'm afraid you're heading straight into a massacre. But since you promised me that our caravans will be spared, I have fulfilled my mission. Go in peace. We should prepare ourselves. I hope I will not regret letting them go. 
They are so full of hatred for the Alliance. You've heard what their leader said. They will do anything to free their own. Then if they are actually ready for a pitched battle, there will be piles of corpses. I have to admit that the story of this attack is concerning. We should talk to Captain Rainhild about it. We can also inform him that the convoys will now be running smoothly.
I hope I will not regret letting them go. They are so full of hatred for the Alliance. You've heard what their leader said. They will do anything to free their own. And if they are actually ready for a pitched battle, there will be piles of corpses. I have to admit that the story of this attack is concerning. We should talk to Captain Reinhold about it. We can also inform him that the convoys will now be running smoothly. Hello, Captain. Your Excellency, what can I do for you? I managed to trace the rebels who attacked the caravans. They will no longer be a problem. You eliminated them? No, that's not necessary. But you must know that this group is part of a much bigger army. An army that is ready to go to war against Hikmet. We have been at war with the rebels for a long time. They did not speak of skirmishes, but of a pitched battle. They want to free their imprisoned comrades and will stop at nothing to do so. This is terrible news. We must prepare the troops immediately. I'll send a message to Governor Buran. Thank you for warning us, Your Excellency. You've given us a chance to resist their assault. I know it's not much, but I hope you'll accept this as a token of gratitude. Thank you, Captain. Ulan, I see that the governor of Hikmet's emissary is already here. He is, and I am very thankful that you succeeded in organizing this meeting. I am full of hope for the future. We are very grateful as well, Your Excellency. However, if you could leave us, I am sure you can understand that the discussion we are about to have must remain confidential. Naturally. I hope that you will reach an agreement.
Glad to see you, my friend. I intend to prove to the Admiral that I fully identify as a knot once more. Without regrets, I will have to go through a test of loyalty. It will certainly be dangerous, but with your help, I am convinced that I will succeed. So, shall we go and see her? It would be my pleasure, but I'm too busy at the moment. Later, maybe. Did you want anything else? I must leave you. Greenblood, my friend. My contacts have spoken. I was able to discover the location of this infamous phantom training camp. Do you still think they should be held accountable? More than ever. You know that I recruited Rayner. I want to know what kind of hornet's nest I led him into. I want to know what these madmen did. But I fear if I go alone, I might not be able to control myself. And I won't learn anything. I need the help of my best student. I'm sorry, but there are other matters I have to attend to first. I see. Come find me again when you have some time. Anything else? I must leave you. Greetings. Bertir to Madrenaixi. So, have you reached an agreement? Our discussions were very fruitful. However, we are faced with a problem. Really? Our peace treaty depends on the ability to exchange freely. And Chief Ulan has warned me that our merchants would be at risk of being attacked by the neighboring clan. Mordun, the chief of the village of Egugsob, is a Danaer Exregal. He is among those who think that the people of your Royland are only here to take from us. But his village would also benefit from this agreement. If you could convince him to meet us, we could reach an understanding, allowing the caravans to pass through his territory. Without this, I am afraid we would not be able to make a commitment. Peace and trade are linked. If our merchants risk their lives coming here, I am sure that you will manage to convince him that the Renaixe are not all bad. I can try, at least. At Redar. We will wait here and hope that you will manage to reason with him.
Green blood, my friend. I can't stop thinking about Rainer and what happened to him. Let me know when you're ready to accompany me to those bastards' training camp. I need the help of my best student. How can I refuse such a request? Well then, let's go. I was informed of your arrival by my sentinels, but I didn't think it would be you, Kurt. Rolf, you're the leader of this camp. Do you two know each other? We train together. We haven't seen each other in a long time. A very long time. The world of warriors is very small, Kurt. What brings you here, my old comrade? And who are these people with you? They're not one of us. My name is Desade. I'm the legate of the merchant congregation. And I'm Siora Donegad of the Gaius Rat. These people sure are important. So, what are you doing here? I've heard things about this place. About this very special camp. And we wanted to see what it was all about with our own eyes. That's very nice of you, but visitors aren't welcome in this camp. What goes on here is only the guards' business. Does the same apply to me? Listen, Kurt. I can give you and your friends some answers, but only because it's you. Anyway, knowing you as well as I do, I'm aware I'm not going to get rid of you that easily. So, what would you like to know? What is it you do here? And why is this place kept secret? even from your comrades in the guard. The natives have their magic, and we have to train elites to be able to face them. That's what we're doing here. Our role is sensitive, and our location obviously cannot be revealed to the whole island. 
Does this man not realize that I'm a Donegad? I noticed you're a native, but you're a friend of Kurt's. So I trust you will be discreet. I see the reason for this kind of training. The Bridge Alliance would be particularly interested in soldiers like these. And yet I've never heard of this elite squadron. We're still in the early stages of the program. We don't want to rush things. And our leaders demand secrecy. Orders are orders. This is a huge camp for such a secret location. How is it organized? The main building is reserved for officers and the wounded. The front and rear of the camp are dedicated to combat training. But most exercises take place outside. Impressive. And how do you manage recruitment? Only the best come here. Those who have combat experience. Once they arrive, they're separated into two squadrons, each led and trained by a lieutenant. But you already know all of this, Kurt. It must bring back memories. Yes. Will you tell us about your training? That's a sensitive topic. Most exercises take place in the field to get the men used to it. The natives' knowledge of the environment gives them as much of an advantage as their magic. But if you want to know more, you should ask my lieutenant instructors. Actually, we found out about this camp while we were looking for someone. A kid I recruited. Rainer. Oh. I didn't know he was one of yours. My condolences. I was told he died in an accident in the harbor. Don't insult my intelligence, Rolf. All right. Since you're here, I guess there's no point in lying to you anymore. The accident occurred during a maneuver. It's regrettable that these things happen, you know? We've taken up enough of your time, Captain. I agree, and I have things to do. I'd like to question your lieutenant instructors, if you don't mind. To ask them about Rayner. You've become a real sap. <sighs> Fine. But try not to disrupt the day's schedule too much. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I couldn't contain my anger. I noticed. Good thing you know this captain so well. I don't think he would have let us investigate otherwise. I'm not sure it's a good thing, really. You don't seem to like this man. Rolf doesn't bring back good memories for me. But let's continue. I want to know what's going on here. Lieutenant. Captain. My friend here would like to learn more about this camp. At your orders, Captain. Sir? Can you tell us about your squadron? The recruits who come here are the best. And in my squadron, they get even better. I don't know what else to tell you. They're disciplined, rigorous, and effective. Exactly what you'd expect from the best soldiers. What kind of training takes place in your ranks? Combat in natural settings. Combat against the savages' magic. I'm very curious about how you train against the magic the natives use. Now, these are complex, secret maneuvers. I'm very sorry, but I can't tell you anymore. That's a pity. It would definitely be instructive. I heard the recruit Rainer trained here. What can you tell me about him? Oh, he was a good one. He died a little while ago. So we've heard. Your captain told us he died during a maneuver. Can you tell us more? The training we do outside can be dangerous. Unfortunately, Rainer fell to his death in a ravine. He fell? During a simulated ambush. I know, it's not glorious, but it happens. I'd like to get back to work now, if you'll allow it, Captain. Go on. We're gonna go talk to some of your recruits. I hope that it won't take too long. We're all very busy here. We'll be quick, Lieutenant. The story about training against magic is a lie. This lieutenant has no idea what he's talking about. So what could they be training recruits for here, then? I don't know. But whatever it is, I don't like it. <laughs> 